Hi again everyone, Chris Tisdell here. In this presentation, I'm going to continue my series of videos on partial differential equations. And in particular, this presentation involves showing how to solve a very famous PDE called the wave equation. Now in fact, we've seen this equation before it's a second order homogeneous PDE with constant coefficients and it's only got second order partial derivatives in the actual equation. C here is a, is a constant. Now we solved this when we looked at um, solving second order PDE with purely second order derivatives. But in this um, presentation I'm going to couple this problem with some initial conditions. Okay, now I'll go into more depth about um, uh, you know, the physical assumptions associated with the wave equation and um, the modelling um, that it's designed to do in another video where I derive the wave equation. So I'll save that for another time. Now the method uh, we're going to use involves factorization of this um, and uh, coupling it with some initial conditions. Okay, and the, the, the ideas will guide us on solving a range of other second order problems. Okay, now this is actually from a previous video, but um, it doesn't hurt to uh, just quickly go back over the idea. I'm going to solve the wave equation using a factorization, and uh, you don't have to do it this way, but as, as, I, as I'll show you, but um, in previous vid videos we've looked at solving first order PDEs. So what the idea of, of this particular approach is uh, to reduce the second order problem down to something that we know how to solve. Okay, so if L is defined as this basically a differential operator, you can write one as this compact form, and you factor L. Okay, so um, you know you can think of you know, just like you would factor this sort of algebraic expression. You can also do that with uh, differential uh, operators, okay? So what does this expression mean? Well, it means that you first of all compute this, okay? So let the result be v and then you compute this. And L, equals, L of u equals zero means you should get zero. Okay, and I've talked about this at length in, in a previous video. So if you let v be that expression, then essentially you get two first order PDEs. Okay, they're, they're, uh, C is a constant, remember. Here's a homogeneous transport type equation, and here's an inhomogeneous transport type equation. So you solve this one first, get a, an answer for V, and then you plug it in there and you solve that. Okay, so um, we know that the solution to 3 is this, where j is an arbitrary but differentiable function such that this holds. So you take that, pl plug it in there, and now you have an inhomogeneous transport equation, which you can solve for your u. Now you can solve this a number of different ways. In previous videos, we've looked at the method of characteristics, and you can apply the method of characteristics to that problem pretty easily. Okay, uh, here I've used the integral equation type approach, but you can get this if you use the method of characteristics, okay? H here is an arbitrary but differentiable function such that this is true. And okay, what about the, this, this integral here? Well, you clean up the uh, argument a bit, and then you define a new function, big G, such that big G prime equals little j. And then you can, you know, do the integral like you would. And you get this, and then if you want to clean it up a little bit, which I've done, you define f and g to be these expressions, and we come up with the form that we've seen already in previous videos. Okay, the general solution to the wave equation is this here. Okay, so like I said, uh, before, there are other ways of, a, of solving the wave equation that doesn't involve 
reducing the problem down to two first order PDEs. You can use a change of coordinates, so you introduce a new set of variables, xi and um, eta, and then you consider u as a function of those variables, and you use a chain rule to compute uh, the partial derivatives involved in the um, uh, PDE, and then you'll see that a lot of cancellation occurs. And you get down to this mixed partial, second order partial equals zero, which you can just integrate and you can put back into your x and t variables. So this is the same as up here. Now this is quick, but you know it's not always clear um, where these come from. You, you can show where they come from, but um, you know, both methods have um, advantages and, and drawbacks. Okay, so, oh, so let me just put that into the frame. So this is the form that we discussed a little earlier. Okay, so we've already talked about these kinds of um, problems in another video. Now, just from the form of the solution to the wave equation, this suggests that there's you know, two families of characteristic curves. Okay, so think of K as, uh, you know, arbitrary constant, N is arbitrary constant, you get these lines. Okay, and we talked about the method of characteristic, we talked about uh, characteristic curves or the characteristic lines a lot. So the green ones might be that, the, um, uh, the red lines might be the, uh, the other family, and for second order problems, at least for this second order problem, you get two families of characteristic curves. Okay, and you can see that what the solution says is that the most general uh, solution to the wave equation is a sum of two functions. This representing a wave moving to the left at speed c, and this rep representing a wave moving to the right with speed c. Okay, but the, the focus of this particular presentation is on the following problem. Okay, now what we're doing is coupling our wave equation with some extra information. Now, this is like, so at time t equals zero, if we know the function phi, then this is, can be interpreted as an initial position of the, the string or whatever we're trying to model the wave. And this derivative here at time t equals zero can be interpreted as an initial velocity. So the psi function here would be a, a known or given function. Okay, so we know that the general solution to the wave equation is this, where f and g are arbitrary but differentiable functions. What you want to do is uh, determine f and g in terms of these given functions phi and psi. Okay, so if we just take both of these conditions and basically take our form here, plug in t equals zero, differentiate and plug in t equals zero, I'll get the following. And what you want to do is to solve for f and g in terms of the known functions phi and psi. <coughs> okay, so if I take this expression and differentiate it, then I get that. And I'm just going to switch to um, S just, to, just for a little bit of algebraic convenience here. But now what we can do is eliminate the, the functions involved. So essentially we've got two simultaneous equations. And if you do that just by adding or subtracting the, the two equations, you'll come up with these expressions here. Now, I can find f and g in terms of phi and psi just by integrating, okay? So if I, if I integrate, I get the following expressions. Here a and b are constants. And if I add these two expressions together, well that's going to cancel out and that's going to cancel out. I'm going to get f plus g equals... Um, <coughs> Phi, uh, yeah, it's f plus g equals phi plus a plus b. Now, 
phi from back here phi equals f plus g so this means that when I add these two expressions together the a plus b constants must equal zero okay all right well substituting in s equals x plus t in for f and substituting in s equals x minus t into the formula for g then we obtain the following okay so this is going to come from your f this is going to come from your g and then I can just sort of team a few of these up okay so I can combine the integral into one expression this then is the general form for the solution to the wave equation with initial position and initial velocity okay so you know if, um, don't be too too worried about these um, these integral uh, or limits of integration just integrate this like you would a normal function of one variable and then just put these um, values of s in okay so that's the um, the solution to the wave equation with some initial position and initial velocity in other videos I'll be looking at the inhomogeneous wave equation so you might have an extra function of h uh, of x and t here okay I'll also derive the wave equation in other videos as well so I hope you can join me for those presentations.